Hello my soccer universe. In round 13 of the 23-24 Austrian Bundesliga season, LASK is hosting current league leader Sturm Graz in the 3v1 matchup. So a real, real big hitting match against one of the big hitters in Austrian football. And Sturm Graz is definitely, meanwhile, Austrian football royalty. Yeah. However, similar to Dortmund in Germany, they did not establish themselves as a truly top club. Yes, a club that was always there, but a truly uh, top club that can hit for titles and so on si uh, since the 1990s. Before that, it was other, 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 other teams. Uh, personally, to me, Sturm Graz was, first of all, always a really, really tough away match and a tough home match. However, Sturm Graz have had usually the advantage of history and just being a little bit better and a little bit bigger. And there's always been always uh, kind of an envious look towards Graz and always the question for me, why cannot we do the same thing in Linz? With that preamble, I would say let's take a deep dive and look into Sturm Graz. Um, the club itself, the fan base, the history, the rivalry with Lusk and so on, and also preview that game. The origins of the club go way back to 1909, when what was not more than students uh, met on the 1st of May 1909 uh, to make a football team that they named Sturm Graz. Uh, there are two theories where the name Sturm, which means storm, but it's also like an attack in German, uh, came from. Uh, the more romantic one is because on the same day that they came together, or three years later, they officially declared themselves as being a club, being more loosely uh, bound together before that, that on this day there was a storm over Graz. And that's where it comes from. More likely is that back then a uh, pretty pro prominent team from Prague called Sturm Prague was visiting in Graz and that was the origin of that name. Yeah. It also fits to me, uh, it being found by uh, students, that Sturm Graz was always a team that was very well when they had a good youth setup and they were relied on youth players. This is when they have been most successful most of the time. Uh, so in that as well, we have this German uh, move uh, saying Sturm und Drang, which is the very youthful, you know, going forward power and you don't care much. It also fits uh, that team. In stark contrast to their city rivals, GRK or Grazer Athletic Club, uh, which were founded seven years earlier, they, as an academic club, they were always considered an every man's uh, a club. Now, uh, as I said in my preamble, Sturm Graz did not become a prominent force in Austria, until, and we'll talk about that in his history until the 90s. However, they won three Austrian championships in 98, 99, and 2011, the latter one being kind of a a little bit of a miracle as well, but they also have six Austrian Cups and they also go back to the 90s in 96, 97, 99. We'll talk about that a little bit. Then in 2010, in 2018 and in 2023. However, in the early years, they also won the Austrian Amateur uh, Championship. And again, you have to know that at that time, uh, the Austrian Professional League was only teams from Vienna. And therefore, uh, all the other clubs play for an amateur cha championship and Sturm Graz won that one in 1934. I want to say that their city rivals won a few more than that, although in the early years, the teams were kind of already on a good rivalry and it always goes back to their red city rivals. They also are kind of famous for being the first team from Austria to allow a sponsor in the club name in 1968 when a, 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 a company for working materials, uh, Durisol, was allowed to be in there and in order to have that they made it official. So it was Eska Durisol Sturm Graz and they had a few iterations since then. Then it became uh, a bank being a uh, Raiffeisen. So they were the Recker Sturm, then uh, a Windows Company Stabil and then I think since the mid 90s it is Puntigammer Sturm Graz. Uh, Puntlinger being a local beer brand from here and you see it over here as well. Um, and they are also now the last company that is allowed to have that name in the club's um, and, uh, name. So uh, it will end at one point, although how long that remains to be seen. I also think, but I'm not 100% sure that in 1978 they're the first team that allowed their 
uh, a sponsor on the pants, which is now also a big tradition in Austria. So and on that sense, they're also uh, on the forefront. They're also one of the first teams, if not the oldest team, to have their own club ma ma magazine, the Sturm Echo, which goes back to 1962. Uh, as we already said, the club's colors are black and white. And at the moment, it is usually they have a black home jersey, a white away jer uh, jersey. They play in blue based on Ponte Gamma. However, the most notable uh, away color for most of you, although they haven't used it in a while, is green because that's the color of the province of Steiermark. <music> Now, I already said a lot about the fan base, uh, that it is more the working class team from uh, the city of uh, Graz. Uh, they have a really, really big fan base. In fact, they are probably the second most supported team in Austria at the moment. Relatively close with Salzburg, but unlike Salzburg fans, who I would say are mostly glory hunters than real uh, uh, fans, they have a very big organized fan base. And Sturm Graz is after Rapid the second most, uh, the second biggest member club. So basically, it, uh, the the club is dominated by its membership. So uh, that's a big factor. And uh, that also gets to, to, to the point that uh, usually Sturm Graz bring a whole lot of fans to their away games, very well salsa supported, not necessarily violent unless it goes against their city rivals. And maybe, you know, uh, there are certain rivalries that have become big, uh, like with the Viennese teams and of course with the Red Bull Salsa, Salzburg, where they are ideologically opposed, of course. Um, it is also curious to me, but I think uh, the reason that they became so big is exactly uh, because Sturmgras became big right when Aust the Austrian League started to get broadcast in Austria on TV. And they had a really attractive team, which we'll talk about in the history session, the section uh, in, just, in, in just a little bit. And it went through the roof from there, right. add to it some European successes. And you have a real uh, aha moment. Yes, this is how you build a very strong fan base. Uh, as of late, they have been making a lot of noise with uh, notable fireworks, especially at the cup final in 23 against Rapid Vienna. This was 4th of July worthy display and also in the uh, game against Red Bull Salzburg this season where they were celebrating 20 years of their uh, one of the ultra groups. Also a major firework ha happening. So this was the big thing. But I also have to say uh, they are actually, it, it's not a fan base that I uh, dislike at all because uh, they are not necessarily known for making a lot, a lot of trouble. In fact, the last time they visited the state stadium in Linz, it, it, will, it was made a note by the last pre, uh, president leadership that they did not destroy anything there. They kept the stadium in really great shape. And that also is great credit to that fan base. Okay, let's look a little bit about the history uh, of Sturm Graz, uh, which, as we said, goes back to the, uh, er, uh, to the early 1900s. Um, most of the time uh, before World War II, as, as we said, it was more a regional uh, uh, championship within Graz or within the Steiermark region, uh, where Sturm and the city rivals GRK dominated um, and became like the big four for four of us and forged a big rivalry culminating in the 1934 amateur championship um uh, the austrian league then got it i mean there was already a big push in the late 30s uh that and other teams from austria not only from from vienna should be uh allowed in the top league this didn't happen until 1949 when actually sturm graz became the first team not from vienna to uh, get in there as the league was slowly expanded uh outside of vienna however it didn't last very 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 long and f uh during the 50s and 60s Sturm Graz was more a second tier team and, uh, you know, scraping in and out. It was not only until um, 1966 when they finally got promoted and stayed in the league. And they quickly established themselves as a mid-table team. And again, mostly as long as they had uh, their youth team set up, they usually were uh, rather successful. Uh, an early success came under coach Otto Baric, who is a true trainer legend in Aust Austria who led Sturm Graz almost to the first championship in 1981 
when they led by two points in in a table with two runs to go and a 2-2 against Lusk and a home loss to Rapid meant that Austria Vienna, uh, who then beat the city rivals, uh, became champions A again. But this is a team that probably most Sturm Graz fans are still very much looking up for. There was also a run in the UEFA Cup in 1984 to the quarterfinals where they were eliminated by Nottingham Forest uh, thanks to a dodgy penalty as far as I understood, but it's all way before my time. Enter the 90s. Uh, Sturm Graz had actually again with a youth movement a relatively good uh, period under Gustl Starek, but then very quickly building uh, their own training center, uh, financial trouble started hitting and they played suddenly only in the lower reaches of the Austrian league. However, the uh, troubles were mounting and there was a person in Hannes Kartnik who wanted to take the goal but never really quite made it. However, when the and I remember this discussion, Austri Austrian TV re relatively well. He was uh, then owning an ice hockey team that never became champions, but was had the biggest budget. And he had the financial means to get rid of all uh, the debt of Sturm Graz. And so he became president. And so the golden era of Sturm Graz started with the appointment of Hannes Kartnick as president. Now, Hannes Kartnick is, yes, Every much as the uh, glamour president as you would like a, a, some, uh, a very great thing personality over, overall, which is uh, why I never really took a big liking to Sturm Graz during those times. However, he was definitely one who was not afraid to make big decisions. Honestly, he wanted to splash the cash on stars. However, his biggest appointment came in 1994 when he hired former Yugoslav coach Ivica Osim. And Ozim was kind of the opposite, a coach that you had to instantly like, very melancholic, playing an absolutely beautiful style of football. And in addition, it was all based on local talents. Yes, they brought in Ivica Vastic, but for Ivica Vastic, there was a Mario Haas, there was a Markus Schopp, there was a Gilbert Prilasting, there was a Günther Neukirchner and, and so on. They made some good signings. They had also with Heinz Schilcher, a former player who had made a career at the great Ajax team in uh, Strasbourg from where he knew Osim, uh, who had good contacts to get good players. And the most important of them came then in 95 with Ivica Vastic. And that cemented the dream team and the uh, magic triangle. Hannes Ranma, Ivica Vastic and Mario Haas is still one of the best teams ever seen in the Austrian Bundesliga. And they started to win right when Ivica Osim. They finished already in the first season second level on points with champion Salzburg. Salzburg team that was kind of a little bit just still the most popular team in Austria time. But it was not a glamorous championship back then. Uh, the next season they had on the final day of the season against Rapid, it was a head-to-head -head who will win the championship. It was Rapid that won on that day, but it could have very well been Sturm Graz who then won their first title just a few days later in the Austrian Cup final. A triumph that they repeated in 1997 when they took a little bit step back. Uh, also because Hannes Kartnick wanted to get a superstar in with uh, Giuseppe Giannini from Roma, that move didn't work out. In 1997, though, they moved to the newly built, what was then called the Arnold Schwarzenegger Stadium, and Sturm Graz took off. In a championship season where they played not only brilliant football, they dominated the league. They won it in the 29th of 36 rounds. So with many rounds ago, I think they got over 80 points, won it at a canter, I think with 30 points ahead of uh, the second place team. It was a team for the ages. The only downer is that they couldn't sustain it. They lost the cup final to Reed. They made good on that in the next, next season when they again won the champ championship. Maybe not as much in style as this time around, but still the best team. Uh, and this time won, winning all so the cup final against last on penalties. Yes, we'll talk about that in the last part. That laid the groundwork for the big Champions League runs. They did not win the title in the next seasons. However, they made three forays into the champ Champions League, uh, being the first Austrian team to make as many. The first time, time around, they were outclassed in a group with Inter, Real Madrid and um, Spartak Moscow. The next one was already a little bit better, where they finished ahead of Dinamo Zagreb. But, you know, I think they had Manchester United in there, uh, which was also a tad too far. But then... In 2000, 2001, yes, they were only uh, in there because they finished second. However, they became the first Austrian team to win their group, a group with Ice Monaco, Glasgow Rangers and uh, Galatasaray. 
And very interestingly, they've lost big away to uh, Monaco and Rangers. However, they won all the home games and they got the solitary point and it was a very even group. They managed to win this group, even with a negative goal difference. Uh, and in the second round, they had again United, Valencia and Panathinaikos and they finished third one in that ad as well. And this is probably one of the biggest European forays that any Austrian team had ever done. Surviving in a Champions League group, not only surviving, winning it. Um, unfortunately, also due to that, many of the Sturm players became uh, how, how, how say, hot properties all around Europe and uh, very highly regarded. And so this team that even so also built up got success, uh, subsequently sold. And Hannes Kartnick, of course, saw the millions coming in and said, well, if we get those play, if we sell this player for that much money, we have, have some money, let's buy a, a few great players. However, that did not sit well with coach Osim and the team uh, got completely reshaped and it was not in his image anymore. They did not rely on the youth, they tried to get the stars and the wheels came off rather quick. Uh, the two big personalities, Osim and Karting, never really saw that much eye to eye. I mean, there's the famous scene where uh, after a big win in Vienna, Karting kisses Osim who really didn't like that. Um, and it ended unfortunately nasty with Osim. Uh, leaving the club and the club then hit actually really really rough times as well uh, of being close to insolvency a few times uh, during that period and at the beginning of that even being overtaken by the city rivals for a short period before they fell down it was the period where uh, everything in Graz seemed to go sideways. Sturm Graz however escaped the big drop uh, and actually had the fortune again to hire a former player from the dream team Franco Foda who stabilized the team and whenever Franco Foda was there, Sturm was suddenly, let's put this in the upper third of the, of, of the table, won again a cup and won in 2011 another championship. Unlike the other two championships, this was not a glamorous one. Uh, I have heard many say that they were the least bad team in Austria at that moment. They were solid, they got it done, uh, had a relatively simple Foda playing style. Uh, however, Foda left again and Sturm Graz again fell a little bit more midfieldy. He came back uh, in, in the late 2010s again, moving the team further for, for, for up. And once he left for the Austrian national, national team, Sturm Graz became kind of soul searching mid table. During this soul searching period, Sturm Graz actually hit gold uh, with appointing their chef scout uh, Schicka as the sporting director and he built them together, he identified uh, different coaches and he chose a coach that was very happy at Austria Vienna but was very highly rated for previous um, times with Christian Ilzer, who is of course also from Styria or Steiermark as we say here in Austria. And within a short period, Sturm Graz became the second power in Austria again, playing in high intensity football with young talents. And now this time, not only from Steiermark, but scouting everywhere. Um, uh, notable names that came through Sturm Graz is, of course, um, uh, Kelvin Yeboah, that they got from an Austrian league opponent and sold off to Italy for millions. Rasmus Hoyland is a, t is a name that you will probably be familiar with, being him being now at uh, Manchester United a, a little bit more than you. He was still playing at Edgem Graz and was kind of sensational there without making the hugest impact as well. But you, you could see there's talent there. So they built up a really good scouting ne network, had also some uh, really good forays in Europe as well and are on very good footing. The only thing that seemingly is holding Sturm Graz back is the stadium question because the stadium that in 97 initiated the big jump into the next level for Sturm Graz is getting old and belongs more or less to the city of Graz and has to be shared with the city rivals that are now back again. So um, there is a lot of revenue that is being lost. And while LASK fans might look with envy towards Sturm Graz for all they have achieved, over the past uh, 20 to 30 years, Sturm fans are now looking with a lot of envy to Lusk for their spiffy new stadium, which, which is everything that they want. So, Be it as it may, Sturm was in challenging for the title already last season. This season, they seem to be even closer to Salzburg. Uh, so that makes for a really, really interesting SAS setup. And I, I, I would say Sturm Graz is definitely one of the most interesting teams 
not only in Austria, but in Europe at this very moment. <laughs> Now, when it comes to the rivalry with Lusk, I mean, there's one thing that um, unites the two teams, and that's, of course, the common colors of black and white, although they have uh, from very differing fan bases with Lusk, um, probably more closely aligned even in name with uh, Sturm Graz. It's, it's, it's it rivals uh, GRK. However, I have to say I always hated uh, the Reds from Graz way more than I did the Blackies, <laughs> which I never really developed as much. Uh, if at all some hate. It was more, and this is not purely for my purpose, a little bit of envy what they could build, but uh, this team that was especially the early years under Osim, it was just a brilliant team to watch, hard to beat, but also a really, really brilliant team. Um, for me, Sturm Graz, as I said in the intro, was always a really tough away game, and I've been at three away games in Graz, and I think I can only remember the nil-nil against... Uh, uh, at the Grum in the old stadium, I think it was in '96, so one of the last games there. Uh, but the other ones, while they were hanging in there, was always tough. And if you look at the overall uh, head to head, while it is relatively close, it leans a little bit more towards Sturm. They almost have identical home and away records uh, switched. Uh, though so uh, in Linz it's definitely more Lusk in Graz it's definitely more and a tad more than in Linz for Lusk it's for Sturm in Graz uh, so the teams are even overall evenly matched with slight edge for Sturm which is of course also shown in the overall history uh, because and it also didn't, didn't help that for most of the 20 uh, to, uh, 2000 and 2010s Lusk was not in the first league so that also kind of tilted a little bit more towards Sturm Graz but uh, Lask is while this is a classic Bundesliga duel uh, both of these teams are not their biggest rivals let's put it that way but it's a classic Bundesliga league, league duel but there's not uh, this huge firm and rivalry in there however there are some meetings uh, that will always li live on at least in my, me my memory Two of the best games that I've last seen ever play were away games in Cup semifinals against Sturm Graz. I think that one was in 98 and the other one was just this year. And yeah, it ended with that Sturm Graz was just always a tad better. And then there's, of course, the biggest meeting between those two was the 99 uh, Austrian Cup final where I was there. Where I think uh, Lask had a chance, it went all the way to penalties. There were two big chances uh, to win it in uh, overtime. Lask took the lead through Ivica Vastic, who, the big star of the big Sturm Graz team, just 10 years later was also the big st uh, star in the, uh, at the dawn of his career at Lask. So uh, there's also a commonality between those, those two teams. He scored the own goal to give Lask the lead at the halftime has equalized and then it went to pen penalties where Lask missed the first two and yeah it was a sad day and Sturm Graz completed the first ever double. Now ahead of the game as I said it's a 3v1 matchup for me. Uh, the last meeting in Linz that was right after the second cup semi-final ended actually with a 2-1 Lask uh, comeback win in another really intense match. Matches between these two teams tend to be intense. Now, it's a game uh, where kind of at the end of a, a four game away stint for Lusk. Um, so it's the first home home, home game in uh, over a month. Um, and it hits against Sturm Graz, who have just lost the first game of the season at home. Both teams have European commitments. Uh, both teams have uh, cup games in the mid rounds. Uh, Sturm Graz at Derby on Thursday, Lask having to play in Kaffmeck, which is also a tough opponent uh, the day before. So uh, both are mid-season mode. Sturm Graz having a one-point lead atop the table. Uh, Lask trying to potentially f uh, get towards the top two, although I think they're just just still a step below. I think the real attack might come next season, but it could point to bigger things for Lask. However, I have a feeling that this game, it's not in any way a must win. I think this will be an open game that may as well end up in a draw as those two teams um, 
are typically even even the match although at the moment one would have to give the advantage to Sturm Graz so I hope you enjoyed this deep dive of mine into Sturm Graz uh, as you saw there's a lot to say about this, this this team it is truly one of the big hitters I'm really looking forward to uh, being at that game uh, not only with my family but also with a fellow youtuber uh, which is definitely fun any case, let me know what you know about Sturm Graz. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.